Hey, it's your open source advocate, and every week I bring you new open source self-hosted software that is absolutely amazing. I hope you'll like, subscribe, and tell your friends about this channel so they can come along on the journey with us. Now let's get started. All right, this week I wanted to talk about uh, something that I've covered in the past, but there is a change to it, so I wanted to give you an update. So I've talked about Pry Tunnel in the past, and really the installation is pretty much the same, but I'm going to go through it again with you anyways, just in case you don't want to go back and try to find that video. Um, you can watch this one, but the thing that's different, so, so it uses OpenVPN, it, it had IPsec already, but the new thing is right here, it's WireGuard. So they've not only got OpenVPN and IPsec, but now you can also use this for WireGuard, which is great. So it's a really nice VPN, it's, it's open source, and you can use it for free, but they do have paid services. So if you're an IT person and you're like, you know what, I don't want to have to deal with setting all that stuff up, I just want to get my people up and running. You can absolutely pay these guys for their services and they can help you keep things up and running with support and everything else. If you're a home user like me, you might want to just set this up for yourself and, and really it's just something for you. So it's, you know, one, worthwhile going through the exercise to get it installed and understand it. But two, they have a really great system. It has a nice user interface. It has user control. So user login and user control that you can set up for your users. You can set up multiple organizations to use the VPN and you can keep those on separate virtual networks, which is really awesome. Um, so it's got a lot of stuff in it and I'll go through that with you. So this is a really nice thing because it's got a nice user interface for controlling everything and seeing everything. Um, and then they've got a nice uh, user interface for Linux, for Windows, for Mac, as far as their client side. So the clients just have a nice little window that pops up and you enable the VPN um, and you can have multiple VPNs that you can turn on all at once. So it's, it's really kind of nice. So if you're on a lot of different networks or need to be on different networks, you can do that. I'm going to set up the Pry Tunnel VPN because this is still a really great option for having a virtual private network. Um, and they have some really great stuff. And as I've said, they've added WireGuard, and that's the part that interests me quite a bit. And I want to show you some differences between when you're connected on OpenVPN versus when you're connected on WireGuard and kind of the speed differences that you'll see. So we're going to go over to DigitalOcean. This is, this is the place that I use for VPS, and I'm just going to create a new uh, droplet here. And when it comes up, um, I'm just going to kind of use some of the defaults, except I'm going to change this this time to the 2004 version. Um, so I'm going to use the 2004 version of Ubuntu here, and then I'm going to go down and leave it on standard. I'm going to jump this all the way over to the $5 droplet. Now, depending on how many users you're expecting to have, You'll, you'll want to modify what you set up, but I think even with like the $15 or $20 droplet, you know, monthly, depending on your users and your use case, this, this could serve a lot of users. I mean, this here could probably serve, you know, 25, 30, 40, 50 users. Um, I'm just guessing. I haven't tested that, but uh, based on what I've seen from what happens when I connect and when I've got some throughput going, it just doesn't take up that much resource. So I'm going to use a $5 one. I'm going to leave it on New York. That's fine. They're telling you that, that there's a few new things here that you can do. I'm not going to utilize any of this today, but you, you can. And then we're going to give our droplet a name. Uh, we'll call this prytunnel.opensourceisawesome.com. And then we're going to go down here. We're going to go ahead and create this droplet. Now, once this thing gets created, I want to assign it an actual uh, domain name. So I've got my domain registrar open here. So while that's kind of building up the droplet, I'm going to go here and I'm going to say add a uh, add a DNS record. I'm going to make it an A record. And I'm going to give it the host name and the IP address. So the host name we just picked was Pry Tunnel. So now we just need that. We're going to set this to five minutes. And then we'll set this to the IP address that we get from DigitalOcean. Should be almost done creating our droplet here. And it is. So we'll just copy that IP address. We're going to paste it right in there. And the first part's done. So I've got this thing ready. It's got a domain that's going to be pointing to my IP address for my server, which is great. That's, that's kind of step one. Now we're going to go back to Pride Tunnel and we're going to look for the documentation for installation. And right here we want the installation instructions. And we're going to go all the way down here to Ubuntu. It's in alphabetical order, so Ubuntu is kind of towards the end there. And we are looking for Ubuntu Focal. So Focal Fossa, I think is how it's said. Maybe Fossa is uh, the latest release. That's 2004. I'm just going to grab all of this stuff here. We're going to 
copy it, and then I'm going to switch over to my terminal. So here I'm going to SSH into that address. So let's see if it's up and running yet. So as always, we're just going to update and upgrade our server. Now, I always upgrade, update and upgrade, and I always type sudo. A lot of people ask me, why are you typing sudo if you're logged in as root? It's just a habit. Um, you notice it didn't prompt me for a password because I'm logged in as root right now. Ideally, you would get this set up, and then you would set up a non-root user and then log in as that person and set up your VPN. Um, but we're going to do this just as root because it's just for testing and just for showing you the process. When you're logged in as the, as the normal user, you're going to do the same steps. You're just going to make sure it has sudo and the commands, which from the website page it seemed to. Um, and then once everything's done updating, we're going to reboot this thing, and then we'll get into the installation of the actual PryTunnel side. If you ever get these prompts, I just leave it on what's already there. I just hit tab till it highlights OK and then hit enter. All right, we're just going to do a quick reboot on this thing now. Again, I'm typing sudo. I don't have to, but sudo reboot. We're going to let it reboot, and then we'll log back into it. All right, we're logged back in. So the first thing I want to do is see if WireGuard's actually installed. It's supposed to be getting installed with the kernel now in the version, in the 2004 version. So you can just type wg if you're logged in as root, or sudo wg if you're not. So here it tells me that it doesn't recognize that command and it suggests that we install the WireGuard tools, so that's fine. Um, I don't mind doing that, so we'll just do sudo apt install WireGuard tools. It may prompt you for your super user password if you're not logged in as root, but let that run through. Now if you do wg, you see it doesn't give you anything back because the WireGuard stuff isn't set up yet, but it does know what the command is, which is what we want. Now we're gonna take that other information that we copied while ago, we're just going to create a, an sh uh, install file. So we're going to say nano um, install dash pry tunnel dot sh. So this is just going to create a blank file. We're going to put in a hashtag and then exclamation point or pound sign exclamation point, whatever you want to call this. A lot of people call it shebang. That's that's also what it is. And then ha slash b i n slash b a s h. So this just tells us this is going to be a bash script. Now we're just going to paste all that stuff in that we copied with Control, Shift, and V like Victor. It's going to paste in all of that stuff. Okay. Now we're going to make sure there's one line underneath, and then we'll do Control O, like open, and it's going to say, do you want to save this? And you just hit Enter for yes, and then Control X to get out of it. So now if we do an LS, we'll see that file there. And we're going to do CHMOD plus x and then that file name so all we're doing is telling it make this file executable because i need to run this script right if you don't it doesn't know what to do with it unless you type in the command in a specific way now we can say dot slash which means from the directory i'm in so the dot slash just means from the directory that i'm currently in run this file So it's going out, it's getting the keys that it needs, and then it's adding in the actual uh, repository that we need for PryTunnel. It's going to install MongoDB, and it's going to install PryTunnel, and it's going to get some things set up for us. And really this script, once it's run, everything on the install side will be complete. So we're going to let this run, and then we'll come back. All right, it's finished up. Now, as long as you didn't see any errors or didn't get any errors at the end of this process, it should be ready to go. It should be installed and running. So the way you can check that is you're gonna go back to your uh, browser. We're just gonna open up a new tab here and we're gonna go to pridetunnel.opensourceisawesome.com. Oh, I didn't type it correctly, so don't put in things in the wrong order.
There we go. So prytonal.opensourceisawesome.com. And it's going to warn you the first time because right now it's using a self-signed certificate. We're going to fix that here in just a minute. So we're going to say advance and we're going to tell it go ahead. And it's going to come to this. So it's going to tell you right out of the gate. You need to run this command back in your terminal to get the information that you need. So I'm going to go run that and I'll come back and I'll do the login. I'm not going to show you that, but just trust me that you need to highlight that and copy it and then go to your terminal and run it. And you need to run this from the server that you just installed everything on. And basically it's going to give you um, a key. You need to highlight that key in the terminal and then copy it. So you could do control shift and C or you can right click and copy. Um, you can kind of pick how you do that. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to paste in that key. And then I'm going to click on save. Once you get past that part, and it does take a little time, and you may even have to refresh if it goes to like a blank white screen for a minute, um, just be patient. It takes a little time for it to, to get the database and everything updated that it's using. It's going to come to this login screen. You don't have a login yet, so you need to use this command that's here in the top part um, back in the terminal on the server, and it'll give you your first login, and then you'll change that inside the software. So since we're going to change it anyways, I'll show you this one. Um, so we're going to do sudo pry tunnel, um, uh, sudo pry tunnel default hyphen password. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to go back, back to the terminal here, and we're just going to paste that in. Hit enter. And there we go. So I've got username pry tunnel, and the password has been uh, automatically created. So I'm going to do control shift C for copy. I'm going to go back to my browser. We're going to type in pry tunnel. We're going to paste in that password. No, I don't need it to save because I'm about to change it. So when you first get in, you'll see that it defaults it to uh, pry tunnel. We're going to change this. So I'm going to change this to what I use. <clears throat> Down here, it wants to know your Pry Tunnel address. So this could be your public IP address, which it automatically detected, or it can be your host name. So I'm going to put in the host name that we created. I'm going to leave this on 443. So I'm going to keep it. I'm going to make this password strong and something that I can remember. Uh, but you can also use your password manager like Bitwarden. So I've got a video out there on Bitwarden. It's a really great password manager as well. I'm not going to use it right now because I'll end up destroying this server after uh, a couple of days. Um, so here, if you're going to use IPv6, you would, in, in, you would add your IPv6 address. We're not going to do that. And then let's encrypt domain. So again, we're going to type in prytunnel.opensourceisawesome.com. So I do want it to go get a Let's Encrypt certificate, but you do have to make sure that whatever you use for your domain can be accessed on port 80 and port 443. So if you have this thing running on like port 5791 and you're not doing some kind of port mapping to make port 80 go to that, then Let's Encrypt will not be able to give you a certificate. So just be aware of that. Just make sure you typed everything correctly and hit save. It's gonna take a minute. It's gonna go out there to Let's Encrypt and ask for that certificate. Um, so if you look right now, you can see that the lock has a little warning on it. It went away. So I think now if I refresh, there we go. My lock is now a solid lock, which means I've got a valid certificate from a certificate authority, which is Let's Encrypt. All right, we're, we're getting there. So now once we get into the user side, I want to go through the settings and I want to go through the setup and everything like that. The settings are really kind of what we just did, but there's there's a little bit more to it. Um, not much. So if you look at settings, you'll see it's really what we just did other than IPv6, everything's the same. The next piece you want to do after that is you want to set up a server. So you go to the servers tab here and then you're going to click on add server. 
here you're going to get another form. So you just need to give it a name. This can be any name you want. I'm just going to call this Home VPN. Here you, you want to give it a port. It can be any port. So this port is fine. As long as that port is not blocked um, on your server, then, then you're okay. Just make sure that you've got it set up. Again, enable IPv6. If this is something you want to use, you can do that. I'm not going to do that right now. And then your DNS. So this just automatically picks Google. I don't really like Google DNS. So I'm going to set up uh, 208.67.222.222, which is open DNS. Here it wants you to set up your virtual private network IP range. So it starts off with 192.168.22. Uh, or .226.0. I'm going to change this to something completely different. I'm going to say 10.102.105.0 and then slash 24. So that means that basically I'll get 256 addresses out of this. So if you want to see what happens, you can change this to .20. And you can see that you get 4,000 potential addresses out of it. You can change it all the way to dot 16 and now you get 65,000 addresses out of it. So what happens though is that it's not all going to be 105. You can only have 250, well 256, but you're using one of them for this server. So 255 addresses if you want to use the same IP all the way out to the third octet, which is slash 24. So we're just going to leave it that way. That's plenty for me. I don't need that many. Enable WireGuard. So here's the secret sauce right here. We're going to say enable WireGuard. It's going to tell us, okay, what do you want for that address? So I'm going to say 10.102.106. I'm going to make it a little different. It can't be the same as the other one, so don't try to do that. Dot zero slash 24 again. And again, depending on what you put in here, you can make this more addresses or fewer addresses. But remember, you can have multiple servers on here too, so we'll look at that in a minute. And then finally, enable Google Authenticator. So if you want to use two-factor authentication, you can check this box, and then it's going to give you a QR code. So if we check the box, I think when we do save, it's going to give us a QR code, and then we have to use two-factor authentication. I haven't done that before, so I'm not going to do it right now, but just be aware it's there if you want to use it. So I'm going to hit Add. Um, it's going to give me something. Oh, the, the, the WireGuard port. Uh, I didn't notice that it popped up, but you do need to give it a port. Um, I think it's... 52820 or something is fine. Uh, you can pick a port that you want. As long as it knows what port you want, it's going to be happy. So hit add. And it says it's adding the server, so it's setting everything up. So this is the UI that you get when you add a server. Pretty nice. Um, so it gives me the name of the server, and it tells me a little bit of information about my server. And then over here, information about users and things like that. So I can see a lot of information about my server here kind of in this dashboard. And if you have more than one server, then you would see more than one here. Uh, but first, we're going to finish the setup for this one. So we're going to go to users. So now we need to set up an organization first. Okay. So the organization, just think of it as a group. So I'm just going to call this home use. Okay. We're going to hit add. So now there's my home use organization. It shows up and it's spelled wrong. <laughs> I can fix this. Um, there we go. Get our capitalization correct. Now we've got home use. Now we need to add users to this organization. So you can do bulk add users. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to add myself here. And I'm going to say Brian. And it, this is my organization. If you have more than one, then this turns into a drop down where you can select. This is my user and my pin. I don't want to have a pin, but you can set a pin for when you connect. Um, when I say a pin, they mean like a pin with, with numeric digits, okay? Um, not a password, it's a PIN. I'm not going to set one because the certificates and everything are, are what I need. So I'm going to hit Add. Oh, it didn't like what I did here. Oh, email. It's so, sorry, it wants email. Okay. We're going to do email here. If I pay attention, it helps. And then we're going to do Add. And there I am. So now I'm part of Home Use. So we're going to go back to our servers real quick. And we're going to click Attach Organization. When we do that, of course, we only have one right now. But if you had more than one, you could attach more than one organization or more than one group of users to this server. And you can do that for any of the servers you have. You could, your users can be part of more. I think your users can be, maybe your users can only be part of one organization. 
but those organizations can be attached to multiple servers. So a user could be in an organization that's on more than one server. All right, so we're gonna keep this right. Okay, so now we've attached our organization and we can start up our server. So we're gonna click the little green button. It's not running yet. Now it's running. We'll start getting log output here. It just kind of continuous log output and there's places where you can go see it, but you can always see it right here. Um, and then here you can see there's zero of one users online. Well, that's because I don't have my client set up yet. Okay, now that we've got the server installed, we want to actually go and set up our client. So Pritono has a really nice uh, GUI client that you can use on their site. Um, so if you go, and I'll put the links in the description, of course. Um, but if you go to their site, you can get this, this client for uh, Mac, Windows, and Linux, which is really great. So you've got Mac OS. Um, I don't know why this is so out of, just weird. Anyway, it's acting kind of weird here on the size. But uh, you got Mac, you've got Windows, and then you've got different Linux. So up here, you've basically got command line uh, installs for your different Linux operating systems or different Linux distros. So depending on the version you're on, of course, you would go and select that one. Uh, I was on 18.04, so I was able to go run this. Now, they also have an Electron client, so if you prefer to get that and install it, you can. Um, this one is actually the native GTK client that I'm running, and I'm going to switch over to it here in just a minute. Uh, but first, so we're going to go back to our server. So once you've got the client, you give your users a login. Um, so you basically just create a different user for each person and they each have a login with a username and a password and again you can set up two-factor authentication if you really want to secure that that ability to log in uh, once they log in they can now as an admin you'll see everyone if they're not an admin of course they would just see themselves but when they log in they get this little line that shows their information and then this little link icon when they click that they get this so they can actually go and download different uh, open vpn profiles so if you're going to use this on the OpenVPN client on iPhone or Android, you would probably want to use uh, one of these two so that you can actually get the OP OVPN file so that you can install that. Uh, if you're going to be using this on the PryTunnel client, then you want to use this bottom link down here. And basically all you got to do is just click in the space and it highlights and then copy it. So you can do control C or of course right click and then hit copy. You can close that guy. Once you open the client, it's going to look like this for you. It's just going to be blank. You're going to hit import profile and then you're just going to paste in that URL that we just copied. In this case, I'm trying to right click and it's not giving me a menu. So you're going to use control V like Victor and then hit import. It's going to go out to your site and it's going to pull down that profile. Now, when you get those links from back on the web page, it tells you that they're only valid for 24 hours. So just keep that in mind. So now you can see that I've got this um, profile in here and it shows disconnected. If I click on the little hamburger menu up here, you can see that I've got a connect option. Now, if you have not installed WireGuard on your client system, you'll need to do that. And it's the same process that we just went through a while ago if you're running Linux and especially Ubuntu. You're going Linux. to bring up your terminal and you're going to do sudo apt install WireGuard-tools. Once you do that, it's going to install WireGuard. You don't want to use the WireGuard snap in this case because it's not checking for the snap install. Um, I did, again, try to test this on the 2004 server with WireGuard that's supposed to be installed with that kernel. It didn't show up, so I did this same command. This just installs all the, all the stuff that you need to run WireGuard. Um, once you run this, I've already got it, so it's probably not going to do anything except tell me it's already installed. Yeah, it is, so it's done. But if you run this, it's going to actually run through the install, and that's good. That's what you want. So once you've got WireGuard installed, and once it's on the server and on the client, okay, so once you get the Pritunnel client installed and you get your profile pulled down and imported, you're going to get this menu. You're just going to click on it. You're going to click on Connect. Now you'll see here I have two options. I have OpenVPN or WireGuard. When I do OpenVPN, it's going to go out to my site and it's going to try to connect and it's going to tell me, hey, I connected and here's your, here's your IP address. So here's the IP address that it connected to for my server and here's the IP address that it assigned me when I connected. We can go back to our browser now. And we can actually go to ipchicken.com. And you'll see that the IP address here matches the IP address that it shows in our client. So 
So I'm going to go back to the browser and I'm going to bring up a speed test website here. And you can use speedof.me or you can use speedtest.net. It doesn't really matter. It just all it's going to do is try to do a speed test. Whatever you use, use the same one for each test. But we're connected to our OpenVPN and now we're going to run our test here. And again, I have about 200 megabit uh, speeds on download and about, uh, I can't remember what it is, but 12 megabit, I believe, is upload. So you can kind of see here what I'm getting for speeds on download right now, or what it's measuring as I'm connected to the OpenVPN client. I'm hitting about 20 max, which is not terrible. Um, I'm on a VPN, so I'm getting nice encrypted packets, uh, but it is a little bit slower than if I was not connected to the VPN. So now we're gonna do the upload, and I do get the full 12 megabits per second on the upload, which is nice. So we're kind of seeing that as it runs here, and it's kind of what we would expect. All right, I'm gonna switch back to my PryTunnel client, and I'm gonna disconnect from the uh, OpenVPN. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the test. Now you can see that I am disconnected and I'm getting faster speeds. Just gonna refresh this and then I'll go over and show you on IP Chicken that I am disconnected here. So I've got my, my home address up. Now I'm gonna go back to the PryTunnel client and I'm going to connect to the WireGuard server. All right, it shows that I am connected to my WireGuard server. I've got an IP address here from my WireGuard subnet. You can see the amount of time that it's been connected. I'm gonna switch back to the browser. And I'm gonna go back to IP Chicken real quick and refresh. And you can see again that it now thinks that we're connected or it knows that we're connected to that server, so it shows that IP. We're gonna refresh speedof.me and we're gonna start the test. Now, if you remember on OpenVPN, we were getting about 20 megabits per second. On WireGuard, I'm not quite getting the 167 that I saw at one point or the 178 that I saw at one point, but we are getting 140 megabits, 130 megabits per second. So this is a much faster VPN connection than when we use the OpenVPN standard. It's nice to have both, but just note that WireGuard is far faster in this case with this connection going out to the internet and coming back. Still getting my 12 megabits per second upload, so I'm not losing anything there, but I'm definitely getting a much faster download speed being connected through WireGuard. That's the benefit of WireGuard. So I just wanted to show you guys this. I think this update to PryTunnel is just absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm super pleased with everything that, that they've got set up for us now. Um, I like the dashboard, so I did want to add another uh, server and another organization. Um, the other thing I want to show you is that you can actually have multiple servers and VPNs set up for different networks. So I'm going to switch back to the browser here so that you can kind of see how this works. So here we've got my server, and I'm just going to say create another server. And actually, so to go back to the browser, okay, I'm going to create a new server. So first thing you do is on your server's page, you just go and say add server. So I'm going to call this the same name. It, it doesn't really matter what you name it, but I'm going to call it workplace again. Um, you can change your DNS server since this is just a test server, I'll just leave it. And I'll leave the port and the IP address is fine, 221. I'm going to say add WireGuard, so I'm going to do the same type of IP address, but I'm going to make it 222.0 and then slash 24. And then I'm going to give it a port, so we'll just give it 25411. Just, I'm just picking ports that, you know, I don't have any ports blocked, but you can, of course, check to make sure your ports aren't blocked. I'm going to click add. It's going to go through and set up the servers here for me. And it's done. So now we have the home VPN, the original server here. And then we have this new one called Workplace. So first thing we have to do is attach an organization. So to do that, you're going to go right back up here to the top and you're going to say attach organization. So I only have one organization. It's just my home VPN organization. So I'm just gonna leave that. But now I have two servers. So I wanna attach this one also to Workplace. I'm gonna click on Attach. So now I've got my same organization with my same users in that organization attached to two different VPNs. Okay, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna click on Start Server. 
Now we're getting some logging, the server's running. That's what we want. I'm gonna go back to my user, and now this user is gonna have a different profile. So I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna click on copy again, and we'll go back to the client, and I'm just gonna click on import, paste that in there, and import, and now you see I've got two servers, and again, it's showing home VPN and workplace. So there's kind of two ways to attack this. So you can go the route of essentially creating two servers and then go back over here and create a new organization with a new duplicate user. So unfortunately, I, and I don't know why it's this way, I can't add the same user to, the, to two different organizations. It'd be nice if you could because then you could create different organizations for grouping people and this person might need access to two or three different servers that those organizations are attached to, whereas other people don't. So they may not all be in the in all of the different groups. It'd be a nice thing for Pride Tunnel to kind of look at and think about and fix, but that, that's okay. Um, so again, create a new organization, add a duplicate user if you need to, and then go back to your servers page and attach that organization to your new server. And now that person has access to to two servers and the benefit you get from having two organizations is you can set them on different servers and you just might have some crossover users who need access but you might have a lot of users who only need this one or that one. Now if it's just you or just family members who you want to have different networks for whatever reason you can do it the way that I've just done it which is create your two servers make sure you've got your users all set up in the organization you want and then go back to your servers and then just attach the same organization to both servers and then whenever somebody downloads their profile or, or uses their profile to import it here on the client they'll end up seeing what I see here so now I should be able to say connect and I can do OpenVPN doesn't matter OpenVPN or WireGuard both should connect and here you can even see it's trying to do something on the logs or I can see that it's trying to do something on the logs there and there we go there's my IP address and then I can do the same thing for the workplace organization and I'll get a different IP address. There we go. There's my workplace organization IP address. So I can connect to either of these different networks. Um, and it's really simple and really, really easy to get that set up kind of multiple different ways. Uh, but I did want you to see that um, PryTunnel is really a, a nice piece of software. I'm very pleased with some of the changes they've made. If you go through this tutorial step by step with me, install your WireGuard tools on your server, install it on your client if you're using Linux, and then get their PryTunnel client installed, you're going to be able to do this and it's going to be really easy to manage your users and manage your organizations and manage those servers. And if you're, you know, if there's a certain time that that you don't need people connecting, you know, to to a certain network, you don't have to tell them not to do it. You can just come in here and say stop the server. And now they're not going to connect to anything until you start that server again. So once you start that server again, now they can reconnect. So that's Pride Tunnel. I really like this software. I hope you'll get out there and take a look at it. And I hope you got something great out of this video. If you did, like, subscribe, share this with your friends, let other people know about it, and I'll talk to you next time.